Hello, today we are going to see how to register for an NPTEL online exam. As you can see, I am currently in the NPTEL portal, nptel.ac.in. You can see the links given at the center part of the screen. So I am going to click on the March 2020 exam registration link that is given here. As I click, it is taking me to a page where I have to log in. It says January to March 2020 exam registration form is open. So please make sure that you have already enrolled to your courses before you register for the exam. If not, please go to Swayam portal and enroll to the course first. Next, now we are going to register for the exam. So we are going to click on the red button that is shown here. As I click on the button, it is asking me to log in. So I am going to use the Google button shown here to log in to my ID. So here I have to log in using my email ID. I have logged in now. It is giving me a link which I am supposed to click to go into the exam form. Before that, I want to point out that Another link which says Jan March 2020 exam courses is given here. This is the list of exams for which exams will be conducted on, on March 29th which is a Sunday. So I am going to click on this link to see the exam courses that are for which the exam will be conducted on March 29th. You can see that more than 100 courses uh, are listed here for which exam will be conducted on March 29th. So I am going to close this list now and I am clicking on the link through which we will be registering for the exam. It is taking me to the basic exam registration form. You have to please note this that you have to read every single detail that is given here. It is extremely important that you go through all the notes that is given here otherwise when you fill the form you may come across some issues so it is important that you go through these notes so you can see on the left hand side there are four tabs basic information college details address details photo signature and add a course on top of all these you can see the green tab here which says timelines and guidelines we urge all the learners to click on the timelines and guidelines and go through the document so that you understand when the deadlines are coming up and it also gives you some details on the exam fees and exam fees calculations and again some general guidance generally about the exam. Please go through all this before you start filling the exam form. Now that we are ready for the to fill the exam form, let us go through the notes that are given here. One is for candidates who are paying through your local chapter. Please contact the SPOC if you need more details. So there are candidates who belong to colleges with whom NPTEL has been partnering with. If any candidate from such colleges have any doubts about the filling of this form, please contact the contact person from your college whom we refer to as SPOC or SPOC of the college. Now this, this second note here, it shows some general instructions for you. One is it says kindly use Google Chrome to fill this application form and also if you want to go from one column to the next you please use your mouse rather than using the tab key any field where you see the red star mark here which means it is mandatory to fill that particular column now one uh, last note that you see here is you are not allowed to change the name and date of birth once it is saved so once you fill this form and you save the details you will not be allowed to go back and change basic details such as name and date of birth so I am going to fill the form now. The name, I fill the full name. Please go back and check one more time and make sure that the spelling is correct. If there is an initial, please make sure that the initial is expanded or in short form, whichever form you want. As you can see, the name entered here will appear in your certificate also. So it is really important that you check again and again and make sure that your spelling that you enter here is correct. Next I am going to enter the date of birth. So you can click on the arrow next to the little boxes there. 
and I can fill the uh, year, date and month here. Now again, please note that date of birth will be verified against a government issued card at the venue of the exam. You are filling this exam so that exam form so that you can write the exam at a exam center. At the center, when you produce a hall ticket, your date of birth will be checked against the ID card that you are producing. So make sure that your date of birth that you enter here is correct. So I had enrolled to the course using this email ID local chapter 2020 at gmail.com. So that is already populated here. Again, please note your email ID is unique and this is your identity. This is very important because we see that students are using multiple email IDs. Note that assignment submitted through this ID alone will be taken or considered towards your final exams marks. So make sure that you use the proper email ID and use the same email ID that which you have used for enrolling to the course as well as for submitting assignments. So what we suggest is you maintain only one email ID for one course. So you use the mail ID to enroll to the course, to register for the exam, to submit assignments, etc. This way it's easy for you to track and also you will be sure that your assignments that you have submitted through this email ID are counted towards the final consolidated marks. Next I am entering the next column which is gender. Now I am entering my mobile number. Please note that the mobile number entered here will be used if NPTEL is sending important SMS notifications. If at all there is any change or some alert we need to send to the learner, we use this mobile number to send out bulk SMS messages. So please men men ensure that the mobile number is correctly entered. Now I am going to the next column, alternate mobile number. As you can see, it is not a mandatory column. You don't see the red star mark here. If you have an alternate number, please enter that here. Otherwise, leave it blank. Now some additional information. The question is, are you physically challenged? Here you can say either yes or no. Either there are some implications. So let's see what those are. Are you physically challenged? If I say no, I can go to the next question. But if I say yes, you can see that another dialog box is popping up here. Here we have to select what kind of physical challenge we have, what kind of disability we have. So there are some options that are given here, orthopedically handicapped, visually impaired with scribe, visually impaired without scribe, hearing impaired. These are the four options that are given here. Note that if your disability is more than 40%, you have to upload a PWD certificate issued by a competent medical authority. Now, if I say that I am visually impaired with scribe, see another message box pops up. What does scribe mean? Scribe is a person who will come with you to the exam center and read out the questions to you and enter the answers themselves on your behalf. So this is a particular situation where a person is visually impaired that he or she needs help from a second person to come and help them during the exam. So scribe is such a person who will accompany you to the exam center and they will read out the questions to you. You will mention the answer and they will type the answer in on the computer screen. If this is the disability you have, you have to make sure that you select the option correctly. So we have put up this message so that you understand what it means visually impaired with scribe. So if I say I am visually impaired without scribe, again the note is popping up saying that with scribe and without scribe is something you have to really understand and choose the appropriate option. If you are hearing impaired again, you can mention that here and, and also write to us if you need any special help. Now again, it's asking if your disability is more than 40%. If it is no, you can leave it, mark it as no and leave it as such. If you say yes again, you need to upload a valid disability certificate here. Okay, so it says please upload a valid PWD certificate issued by a notified medical authority. So I'm going to say no and then move on to the next question. So what I've chosen is, yes, I am physically challenged, hearing impaired, but 
my disability is less than 40 percent so i have marked it as no and then i'm moving on to the next question again it, it is asking do you belong to the sc st category if i say no this part of my exam form is completely filled and i can click on next if i do belong to the scsc category i'm clicking on yes here again we have to upload a valid scsc certificate there is a box here where you have to click and it will take you to the box where from where you can upload the proper file here so again a note is given here which says applicants who claim to be of uh, the scsc category should submit the proper document and it is given some uh, details as to what kind of document is accepted once you upload it it also is asking you to confirm that the certificate is whatever we have uploaded is accurate NPTEL will check and verify to make sure that the, cert the community certificate you have uploaded is correct if not we will notify you and we will give you some time to upload the valid certificate if you do not upload a valid certificate please understand that your hall, hall ticket can be withheld and you will not be allowed to write the exam so it is extremely important that you upload a valid SEST certificate here so again I am saying no here and so I have now filled all the details I am scrolling up and making sure that I have filled all the columns here and I am clicking on next button so you can see from basic information it has moved to the college details tab so we are in the second tab it says college details this is where we enter all details pertaining to the college uh, where we are studying or the organization where we are working now while enrolling to the course i had mentioned that i am an employed person but that was by mistake that i had checked the employed column now i want to change it to student so i am clicking on the student column under your current role now please note that you have to select the option student only if you are currently studying in that college if you have finished graduation and you have moved out of the college please click the others under role so since I am a student at this college I am going to select the option student if you are a teaching faculty you have to select the option faculty if you are employed in some organization you can choose the column employed and enter the details of the organization here if you don't belong to any of these categories you can click on other and provide the details here so i am going with the option student again it says that you choose this option only if you are currently studying at the college so now i am selecting the country india state I'm going with Maharashtra and city where the college is located. Note that we have given a special note here which says the list of cities where we have input and local chapters is displayed here. So only those cities are displayed here. If your city is not available, please select others and type the name of the city. So I am selecting the city where my college is already is located which is Solapur so I am selecting Solapur here and you will notice that in this box colleges from Solapur alone will be displayed so I am selecting the college Valchand Institute of Technology if my college is not listed here please go ahead and click on others and type the name of the college so if the college is already listed here you must absolutely choose from the drop down list only then you will be correctly tagged to your college name okay so if the college is listed please click from the drop down otherwise click on others and type the college name my college is listed here so i'm going to go ahead and select valchand institute of technology next again these are all mandatory columns so i am clicking on the degree which i am studying several options are given here i am going with be and the department i am going with chemical engineering a year of study i am currently third year so i am selecting the option third year now again a few more options which will give us a better idea about you and your background 
we are saying how did you know about these courses so i came to know these college uh, this uh, mptel courses through my friends so i'm collect i'm selecting that option what is the motivation factor for doing this course again i want to update my knowledge so from the options given here i am using choosing the uh, option update my knowledge now the next couple of options are extremely important you have to pay special attention students who are studying in colleges have to pay special attention here the question is are you taking this exam for credit transfer now people who do not understand what credit transfer means we recommend that you go talk to the college authorities or the sboc of your college but to give a gist there are colleges and universities that are allowing you to take nptel courses in the place of the course offered by the college if you are sure that you are taking this course or this nptel exam for credit transfer go ahead and click on yes again if you are not sure please talk to the college authorities and then fill the form so if i click on yes here a message is popping up it is saying if the exam is taken for credit transfer that means you are writing this exam instead of taking up another exam that is given by the college or the university so if the exam is taken for credit transfer by default your exam score and e certificate will be shared with your college this is so that the college can take this information and use it to transfer these credits to your college system so if they if you are saying that you are taking this exam for credit transfer by default meaning compulsorily your details will be shared with your college so you can click on okay here if you say now that you are not taking the exam for credit transfer go ahead and click on no again the message box is popping up saying you may choose to share or not share your exam score so you are not taking the course for the for exam uh, credit transfer at this point you can now decide whether you want to share your exam score with the college or not okay so i am saying i am not taking the exam for credit transfer but i wish to share the details with the college anyway so here i am clicking on yes so if i click on yes again it is saying that please note that all the details will be shared with the sboc of your college if i say no here it will again say if you say no to sharing what will happen is none of your details will be shared with your college which means when the college the local chapter of your college is considered for rating your details which is not available in their login will not be considered for the ratings so you saying yes or no has certain implications if you say yes to sharing information with your college your score etc will be shared with your college and those will be considered towards the ratings of your local chapter if you say no to sharing score with your college your results will not be shared with your college which means they will also not be taken towards the rating of your college please understand this fill this with utmost care and if you don't understand any part of this please write to us or contact the college authorities and understand it and then fill the form so i am saying yes it is okay to share the details with the college now there is one more check box which says i agree and understand that my registration details hall ticket exam score etc will be shared with my college and the sboc i agree i see so the last question in this page is can we share your contact information with potential employers this is a question we are asking because some employers have started contacting nptel saying we need candidates who have completed nptel exams whose profile is um, meets certain requirements so for example they may say we need uh, a candidate who has completed such and such computer such and such computer science course with a certain percentage of marks so in such cases if you permit us to share your contact with potential employers you can say yes here only those who say yes here only those details will be shared with the potential employers so if you say no here then your details will not be shared with the 
potential employees so i'm going to go ahead and say yes and one more time i am scrolling up to make sure that i have filled all the columns here so my role is student i have filled my country state name city name college name degree department year of study etc some other details and i am not taking this work credit transfer but i am willing to share the score with my college and then i am also okay with you sharing the information with my with the employers so now that i have filled all the columns here i am clicking on the next button so you can notice that the it has moved on to the third tab here which is address details now please understand that these address address details suggest for our information the certificate will be will not be printed it will be only as in e certificate form which will be shared in your login so this is just for some information so i am going to go ahead and fill the uh, details address details here so i have filled the address details you can see that this, the address that will be displayed in the certificate is shown here the full address along with the pin code is displayed here so i am giving one more confirmation that i am confirming that the address is correct and then again i am clicking on the next button okay this is again an extremely important step where you have to upload your photo and signature please understand that there are some specifications that are given here i am going to read it out face should occupy about 50% of the area in the photo photograph and it should be a full face view looking directly into the camera it should not be a side pose or a pose from the top angle and the maximum file size is 150 kilobytes so if you try to upload a bigger file uh, size photo it will not accept if you want to avoid any upload error it's is better if you open the image in ms paint and save them in jpeg format understand that this photo will appear in your hall ticket if your photo is not good hall ticket will not be generated for you and you will not be allowed to write the exam any type of photos that are selfies or which has blurred images or photo of someone else dummy photos group photos etc will not be acceptable in such cases you will be notified and if you do not upload proper photo and signature hall ticket will not be generated for you and you will not be allowed to write the exam please take this very seriously and upload a good photo and signature here so we have given some sample photos which are acceptable versus which are not acceptable please upload a proper photo and signature so i am going to upload a photo here okay so now that we have uploaded the photo and the signature i am clicking on save and next button so a message box is popping up asking you are about to submit your profile information are you sure you want to proceed so this is a confirmation it's asking if you say okay which means the photo and the signature images will be saved and you will no longer be able to edit this so make sure that you upload a correct photo and image and then click on okay here save your basic info please go on to booking your exam slots now, so now we have filled all the basic information next step is to add a course for the registration so now we have to add a course you can add multiple courses so from the course details drop down here i am going to select the course aircraft maintenance and the exam date as you know i have uh, selected the march registration link only the march date is shown here so i have selected the exam date as march 29th exam session again this you can select either the morning ses uh, session or the evening session please note that the session you may select morning or afternoon but based on availability of seats in that particular exam center on that particular exam day your final exam city and session will be allocated so this is your preference but it all depends on the availability of seats at that particular center for that particular exam session so i am going to go ahead and click on morning session here okay so the course name the exam date exam session has already been selected so next step is for us to choose the exam city and state so we have to first click on this box here to select the exam cities so you have you are asked to choose 
give your exam city preferences so you have to give exam city first choice exam city second choice and then you also have to choose exam city third choice so let us go ahead and select the exam state so i am selecting maharashtra and my first choice is exam city is solapur again exam city the second choice again i am going to write exam in maharashtra and my second choice city is going to be uh, mumbai now the third choice if for some reason the above cities are not available or the seats are full i do not have a choice to write the exam there meaning i am not going to be allocated to any of the choices that i have mentioned in my first and second city preferences so this is the exam city which will be absolutely given to you which means if i select maharashtra here five cities are mentioned here where exams will be 100% conducted so you can see that mumbai is an option that is given shown here as a default city so the cities that are shown in third choice exams will be absolutely conducted in these cities so since for me writing the exam in mumbai is easier rather than the other cities i can choose mumbai or again solapur my first choice is also available here so i am going to go ahead and select solapur here so which means that i will most definitely be allocated to solapur exam city depending on the seats so i am going to once the exam cities are chosen i am going to click on add course so it says course is successfully added to the cart now i want to go and make sure that the choices that i have made are displayed correctly so i am going to click on preview cart so you can see that the course name aircraft maintenance the exam date my exam session fn means four noon session that is the morning session and the amount is exam fee 1000 rupees is displayed here correctly and it shows the pay under payment status the payment has not started at this point in time if i think that my choice is incorrect and i want to cancel this is the place that i go and cancel so this is where we can delete a course once we delete a course we will get an email confirming the deletion and also the exam fees that we may have paid if at all you have paid it will say that it will refund the exam fees in 2 to 3 weeks in this case i have not paid the exam fees yet so there is no question of refunding the exam fees but this is where i go and delete the course now i want to add one more course so i am going to click on add more courses so again it takes me back to the add more, add course tab so i have already selected aircraft maintenance but if i try to select the aircraft maintenance course again it will show that you already have that course in your cart so i have to choose the second course which is consumer behavior exam date again march 29 exam session so you will remember that i had previously chosen morning session so if i try to select morning session again it will again give me an alert saying that the slot is already filled for you so i have to choose the alternate session which is the evening session again it is alerting you that the session you select here will be available and it will be allocated to you only depending on the availability of seats on that particular exam day at that particular exam center okay so now that i have given my preference here again i am going to click on this box here if i want to change anything here this is the time for me to change so i am thinking that i am going to write the exam i would rather write the exam in uh, kolhapur and my second city choice is mumbai and my third city i am checking and kolhapur is not available but mumbai is here so now i can if necessary i can go ahead and change the city here okay now that i have done selecting all the exam cities i am clicking on add courses to add the course to the cart so course is successfully added to the cart once again i am clicking on the preview cart to make sure that all my selections are displayed correctly so the second course has also been added consumer behavior 293 for noon afternoon everything is shown the payment has not started 
If I say add more courses here, it is taking me to the same box here but then the two courses that I have uh, enrolled to have already been added by me and it is shown in the view card. So I, I have completed my course addition process here because for March 29th exam we can add only two courses, one for the morning session and one for the afternoon session. Now that I have added all the courses, I am going to view the card and proceed to pay. So it is displayed again. Notice that there is a column called discount for payment. If I had chosen S2, SESD or PWD, the discount amount will be displayed here. Since I said no to both those options, it is shown as 0 here. The full amount is displayed as 2000, that is 1000 per course. So the total amount to be paid by me is rupees 2000. So I am going to preview and check out. So these are the details that are displayed. As you can see, an application number has been generated. So it is worthwhile to note that whenever you send an email to NPTEL talking about any discrepancies or any issues that you are facing, it is good for you to code this application number along with your email ID. It is much easier for us to trace the issue if the application number is coded. So the application number is displayed here. All the other details are also displayed. I am checking if whatever I entered is correct. So my address, my photo, signature, um, the course name, the amount, everything is shown here now. So now if I want, if I am not understanding how the fees are calculated, I can click on exam fee examples and I will, uh, the details are explained there. So now I see that the total amount to be paid is 2000. So now next step is to pay the exam fees. So I have to click on the declaration first, fill the captcha here. It says I am 18 years and above. I agree to the exam scheduling process. If for some reason, for uh, logical, logistical or operation reasons, NPTEL is not able to run the exams on the scheduled date, NPTEL may change the uh, date session. Uh, all those uh, declarations are given here. So I am agreeing to some of some conditions that if at all I am not allowed to write an exam in an exam center, I may be allocated to the next uh, uh, city. And I agree to follow all the conditions and the evaluation and publication of results. Question paper and solution will not be published for the NPTEL courses, exams. Course instructor decision is final. And if the candidate fails in any of the exams, NPTEL will not conduct supplementary exams for the same. And also, I am agreeing that I should use the same email ID throughout the course run for enrolling and for registering for the exam. And assignment submitted will be taken only from this particular ID and only those marks will be taken towards my final score. So I now have to click on I agree to all of the above conditions. So this is something that I am declaring here and my final step is to click on the pay now button. So I am clicking on the pay now button. It is again giving me an alert saying this is a March exam. Kindly make sure that all the details are correct. And once you confirm here, you will not be allowed to make any changes. It is best if you have to make any changes, click on the back profile button, change, make all the changes and then go to the payment gateway. So I am clicking on OK and it is taking me to the payment gateway. So this, this here I can use a credit card or debit card, internet banking, enter my card number etc. And then I can make the payment. So once you make the payment or at this point if you decide that you don't want to make the payment now and if you want to cancel, this is the time that you can click on the cancel button and about the uh, transaction then it will again send you a mail saying you have registered but you have not paid the exam fees. So this concludes the exam registration process. So the same process is what you will follow if you want to register for the April exams. Again. You go back to NPTEL portal and here is the April exam link. You have to click there and follow the same process. Hope everybody understood the process. If you have any uh, questions, please write to us at support at Happy learning. Thank you.